GOP presidential candidate Donald Trump waded into two of the most contentious issues in the 2024 election. This morning, he spoke out about abortion, saying the laws should be left up to the states. Take a look. The states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both, and whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks, or some will have more conservative than others, and that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. You must follow your heart or, in many cases, your religion or your faith. In the video, he took credit for ending Roe v. Wade by appointing conservative Supreme Court justices while he was president. So saying that the states should decide this issue um, is something that many uh, pro-life conservative past Republican officials have said, many of them, but not all of them. Uh, Others have raised the prospect of a national abortion ban. And funny enough, uh, Donald Trump sounds like one of his opponents from the 2024 primaries there, Nikki Haley, who was the most clear on the fact that uh, abortion should be left to the states, that there's not enough consensus to have a national policy. So I think this is, I think it's certainly good politics and frankly, good policy from my standpoint to, uh, to declare this. Um, I I haven't seen a lot of outrage yet from some of the more religious conservative supporters of Donald Trump. We'll see if that materializes. I would expect it does not, but um, this is probably a smart move for him. Yeah, I think the problem he's going to face is that certain states have announced plans or have tried to implement uh, more strict uh, abortion restrictions than is desired as polls would reflect. And when there have been ballot initiatives where states get to decide on a state-by-state basis, the more pro-choice ballot measure seems to have been winning out even in places that are historically more right-leaning like Ohio and Kansas. So in effect, if what you're saying is we should leave it up to the people, that is a weird, like an almost an acknowledgement that the people don't want the kind of draconian policies that are being pushed on the state level by many people who are um, allies of Donald Trump. And I think it will be up to Democrats to make that point clear, that even if it is the case that people in various states have pushed back against really conservative abortion laws successfully, that if Joe, uh, if sorry, if uh, Donald Trump had his druthers, according to the allies that he has within his party and people who he has uh, accepted endorsements from and the like across the country, then those are the people who are pushing for more draconian rules. And that might be the case that when these rules come to your state, you may or may not be successful with that. Well, I, I mean, it reflects the fact that there's disagreement on this issue and that redder parts of the country might want different laws than bluer parts of the country. And I'm, it must be I'm saying it must something. Be I'm, thinking I'm saying the exact opposite, that even in redder parts of the country where voters have had an opportunity to vote specifically on this issue as a single issue on the ballot, they have sided with protecting abortion rights, not the opposite. They have. And then that's that's what it will be. The act, the advocates for this issue, the pro-life cause or the pro-choice cause, have to make their arguments to the to the people and it will be decided on a, a state-by-state basis. And that, I mean, frankly, the, the repeal of Roe v. Wade was about returning this issue to the states, was saying that this is not, I mean, the, the pro-life conservative um, um, originalist argument for Roe v. Wade was that this issue is actually not wrapped up or should not be wrapped up in a, a privacy protections um, in the in the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. The the our legal documents are silent on this specific question and thus the issue should be left to the states. And that's what that's what a lot of conservatives, even some very pro life conservatives, wanted to accomplish for forever. And then Yes. Now again, so if public sentiment is against, um, uh, law, is is not is not for, not in support of laws against abortion, then that's how it will have to be until the pro-life advocates have won more people to their cause. And if it's yeah. moving in the other direction, so be it. I mean, it is worth noting that the point of the Bill of, of Rights and certain kinds of constitutional protections is to protect the minority against the tyranny of the majority. And that is why we don't leave it up to you know, ballot referendum, whether or not people should have free speech rights and the like. 
Um, and so I know that you put it in quotation marks, but many people think that a privacy right is a substantive right that should have been continued to be con uh, protected constitutionally. And that's what folks are fighting for in places like Ohio um, when there's a question about whether or not their constitution of the state is going to be changed to protect or exclude those kinds of rights. So again, I think this is ultimately, I know that he's trying to thread a needle here because he's smart enough to know that this is a losing issue for him, but claiming, you know, really owning um, making the uh, Supreme Court appointments that resulted in the overturning of Roe is something that I'm not sure is going to uh, inert to his benefit come election season. I do think abortion is one of the few issues that Joe Biden can sort of effectively wield to get people to bend the knee and vote for him, despite being very frustrated with him mm. at a number of other points. But isn't but Trump is showing that he is somewhat savvy on some of these I mean, you're right that it's not a that it's not a winning issue for the Republican side right now, especially since the repeal of Roe. Um, him doing this says to me that he is trying to win this election. Unlike I don't know what Joe Biden's doing exactly, but he's really he's really going for it. Yeah. Well, in other Trump news, the ex-president's campaign and Republican National Committee claim to have raised over fifty million dollars in a fundraiser for Trump at Mar-a-Lago Saturday night. According to a New York Times report, Trump repeated statements that reflect a preference for certain immigrants at the ritzy shindig, telling attendees at the multi-million dollar dinner he wished people from, quote, nice countries like Denmark, Switzerland, and Norway immigrated to the United States, at one point saying migrants from Latin America, from gangs, quote, make the Hells Angels look like extremely nice people. Hmm. What do you make of that? It seems to me that there are nice people and not nice people in countries all over the world. And to say that all the people of Denmark or Norway are nice people and all the people of, let's say, a Latin American country are not, seems to be essentialist, um, really driven by a bizarre identity politics, and does not... Um, so it, it, it raises some interesting questions about how he, as the president of the United States of America, is expected to have the credibility and respect of his own constituents who hail from some of the countries that he once referred to as shithole countries. Well, I think he's said that there are some good people coming from those countries, too. Obviously, it does this not just reflect that those countries, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, have much incredibly lower crime rates, lower than the U.S., frankly, have more well, wealth. You can decide more. to not admit people with criminal records into the country. Do you think that most people in Venezuela are criminals? Do you think that, you know, like, <laughs> this is, this is no, what we're getting a, to. There's when a you much talk higher about, level of political dysfunction right. and criminality and violence. Okay, and but what do you think the average activity? rate of criminality is in any given country? It's, it always represents a significant minority of the population. So if we're saying that one country has... 5% criminality, another country has 10% criminality, but I don't want to take anybody from the 10% criminality country, especially to say something like that when the economic dis discord in those countries, to a T almost, you can go down and look at a map of coups implemented by the United States in Latin America over the course of the last 50 years, and our country's fingerprints are all over the poverty and immiseration that you see in those countries, and then to turn around and say, those people are bad, they are created their own destiny, they are inherently criminal, when it's the criminal actions that are United States government the, the that have bad, created those conditions. The bad foreign policy decisions of our government uh, make us require we can do nothing to but admit people from admit dysfunction, admit crime, admit... Wait, why are you buying into the, the false framing that to allow an immigrant from, let's say, Venezuela is to necessarily allow a criminal? Are you buying into the framing that all Venezuelans are criminals? No, but they're okay, far, so, far less... We're, we're, so, we're the Danish gangs. We're the so, so Trump, Swedish or Norwegian Do you not think that there's criminals in Denmark? In do you think they're not, not murderers in Sweden? There like, are that's very insane. Few. There are very few. Okay, so don't admit the murderers from Sweden and don't admit the murderers from Venezuela. Well, we agree on that, but they're but that's streaming not what across Trump the is southern saying. border. What Trump is saying is that there are nice countries where it, implicitly anybody could immigrate from there because they're all nice. And there are not nice countries where implicitly no immigrants should come from there because they're not nice. But and not, Donald Trump could very easily say something that's like, true. America welcomes immigrants and, and, and articulate some kind of standard for admission that he thinks would benefit the country, et cetera, or because they're suffering certain kinds of harms in their home country and the, the asylum process makes it so that he thinks America should be a welcoming place for them. He could say, these are the qualifications of the kind of immigrants that we'd like to see. 
But to make it based on nationality is deeply essentialist and a kind of identity politics I thought that the right wasn't interested in. No, the, the standard is come here legally, don't pour across the southern border and uh, through the over the wall and across the river and that kind of way. Well, what he said, you can you can apply to be his scriptwriter, but that's not what he said. What he said, and I'll get, leave you with the quote again, um, is that there are uh, uh, where sorry, I just lost it in the script. Um, that he wished people from quote nice countries like Denmark, Switzerland, and Norway immigrated to the United States. At one point, saying migrants from Latin America from gangs quote make the Hell's Angels look like extremely nice people. I guess the Hell's Angels are nice too, and we should import the Danish version of their biker gang. I think, I think many of the American people would like to welcome uh, immigrants if we can vet them in some way and know that they are not. Um, criminal or going to engage in regardless of if they're from a, a nice country of, or a shithole country of course but they are vastly, well, that, vastly that, more likely that raises the question of be, why we're de designating nice countries versus shithole countries if the point is the human being what happened to Republicans love I mean, to you fight Denmark is a nicer judge country judge somebody from the continent their character not the color of their skin or their national origin and that seems to be yes, exactly every person what, needs to be judged exactly on an Donald individual basis but we're not we're not doing that they're streaming across the no border. we're not doing that because <laughs> Donald Trump Donald Trump could have said a lot of things. He chose to say that certain countries are nice and some certain countries aren't. That is identity politics. That is the kind of uh, national essentialism or racial essentialism that I thought we were well past. And it's, it's not really racial contrary to it's the statistics um, of the Martin Luther King's reality dream. of the country. But tell us what you think. More rising right after this.